Wah, I have a long ain. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to read this in English. So yeah, no, that was Swedish. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. So I'm going to go through patch 0148.6, the new patch on Valheim. And they say, Waha, this was a long one. Sorry for the delay, but we were waiting for a specific patch to the Steam Socket API. Actually, I got this Steam update yesterday, I believe. <clears throat> and it just went live today. No, I think I got it. Just it yesterday, maybe it was this morning. Anyway, the fixing question is not listed in the Steam change log. It's not listed in, that's really weird. Anyway, I recommend you make sure Steam has updated to March 22, 2021 version. And yeah, exactly yesterday version. Steam menu help about Steam. Steam will, of course, automatically update itself to this version. Lots of big and small changes in this patch. Some gameplay tweaks and some bug fixes. Ah, okay, they're referring to lots of big and small changes in this patch to Valheim, not necessarily to the Steam, even though they were talking about Steam. That's a bit confusing. Maybe they should have split that out a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to go through the patch notes of this one because there's actually a lot of really interesting stuff in here and some stuff that I guess are just stability, stability related and everything. And they say, note, don't forget to update your server as well. No, that's not Batman. He, he's not around. And before I go into this, I have a very short little amusing story. I was literally today making a video about wolves, specifically this part, night spawning wolves and all that. I was making a video about how do you actually tame and breed one star and two star night wolves. And I was, you know, hours later, everything was good. And I'm like sitting back, relaxing and bang, I look at my steam and it's like, oh no, why is Valheim blue? Update needed. And then I went to check the patch notes. I'm like, oh my, <clears throat> insert curse. Um, the night spawning wolves should be easier to tame. So now they stop trying to run away and despawn after starting to tame. So my video was basically useless because not that it thinks are not valid, but that's what, one of the big things that people have problems with because they used to despawn and it was getting dark. So yeah, that video is gonna be tossed in the, in the well, gonna be fouled permanently. And uh, I will try to pull in some of the footage, actually, and as we I discuss this a little bit further later on. But yeah, that was uh, amusing and a waste of a few hours, but it's good they fixed it. So anyway, as a sidetrack, I do try to cover these patch notes uh, just to save you from having to go read all that by yourself. So the first one is campfire, bonfire and hearth take damage when dealing damage. So we have here a fully repaired bonfire. Now I can see it. Let's have a look and see when the player goes in. So I'm going to go in here. And uh, I'm taking damage, of course. Actually, not a lot of damage. One damage. I think they should increase that a little bit. That's a little bit too little. Anyway, let's see. Do I need to? Oh, yeah. You do need to repair it. Now, I can see them actually having made this change because they don't want campfires and hearths and bonfires and everything to be used to kill enemies because you could sort of burn them up even though it seems like it would take a really long time. So having them take some damage as a result would stop that. However, they should probably avoid that happening when there's a player. This seems fairly high damage. I mean, I've taken, you know, 20 damage or something like that and the bonfire is basically going to expire and break down as a result. Yeah, that's a little bit of a weird thing. I mean, at least you get this stuff back. Can I get my... Did I? Oh, okay. Uh, let's throw this one. Yes, okay. Get that back. So, I mean, I guess I could just rebuild it and everything, but that's a little bit of a... Why is... No. I... Give it to me. Yes, okay. I went to the circling course. Anyway, so, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I see why they've added that to the game, even though I think it's, that's a little bit excessive. I don't think it should take that much damage. Next one, we have reinforced chest inventory space increased to six times four. Oh, this is something that was definitely needed. I mean, we, we still have a chest problem where the regular chest basically has two rows. So now the reinforced one has four, which is good. I still think that's a little bit too little. I think the regular one should have at least three rows and maybe the reinforced should have five because you know how it is, right? You end up with literally a whole wall with basically like 20 chests just to try to put in your things. And I think that's, I mean, it's, it becomes a chest management game rather than just a gathering of your resource because you end up having so many chests. Please, I mean, I, good that they added a row. I think they should do more than that. But it is a good start. Thank you, Valheim, for, or thank you, Iron Gate, rather, for listening to us. 
And number three is interesting. It says all boss drops can now float on water. I guess that is good because they, I think they are going to be introducing a water and ocean boss as well. And having the boss drops actually not float is obviously a problem if you're killing them in the water. So that's good. I mean, definitely it should be. You shouldn't losing things. You shouldn't be losing things just because it's in the water. Now the sunken crypt entrance has tweaked to stop tombstones from getting stuck. Uh, interesting. I know people have been sort of cheesing the tombstones, or tombstone, cheesing the sunken crypt entrance by digging under them and then basically jumping up and putting themselves into it without using the key. So maybe some of these things still need to be, be fixed. Fixed rotation of wood tower shield and item stands. I guess these are small things that can be fixed because it wasn't correct. We have Death Squito and Drake trophy drop rate increased. Interesting, because I've killed a bunch of Drakes and I have actually, I don't think I have a single Drake trophy. I haven't killed any Death, Squ Death Squitos yet, but I've killed a bunch of Drakes and I can't just can't get the trophy. So good. I mean, maybe it was just too low. One and two star creature hit point fix. I wish they would have said whether they increased it or decreased it or whatever the fix was in detail because one star is supposed to have double the HP of a regular one. Two stars is supposed to have four times. Uh, maybe that was not the case. Maybe there was some issue with that, but, uh, but okay, good they fixed it. And now we come to uh, the amusing part. Night spawning wolves should be easier to tame now. Should stop trying to run away and despawn after starting to tame. So the thing about night spawning wolves is that when you go to the snow biome and you're trying to get one star or two star wolves, you have to go at night if you want to get two star, but one stars are much easier at night as well because of how the spawning works. The problem was that even if you started to tame, so you lure back to your base, into your enclosure, and you throw them some meat, so they're starting to tame. Everything seems to be good, as you can see here. And this is actually some of my footage that actually I'm tearing out from a video that I'm not, never going to be publishing. But you can actually start tame, taming them. The problem was that because they were night spawning, the game basically, if you went out of the area, they would despawn. So they would despawn while you were taming them. It would also be that if you were ta you tamed them, they would still run away at night, and that was obviously not very good because they should be following you when they're tamed. But night wolves, night spawning wolves, would still run away, and they would despawn if you left the area. Big problem. Even further, once they were fully tamed, they would also despawn when you left the area. So I believe that what they've been doing now, they've made that a little bit more forgiving. So you can leave the area, you can come back as as long as they've started taming. They should not be despawning, which is good, which makes breeding them a lot easier because previously you would actually be breeding them and you would have to stay in the area until you got a cub out. And if the cub wasn't a star a cub, you would basically have to, well, well, you don't necessarily have to kill it, but you would have to restart and try to breed another one until you get that star cub out of there, which then would be a regular wolf and would despawn. And you left the area and the mommy, well, mommy or daddy, the, the parent, the star parent that was a night spawning wolf would despawn and you'd only have the kids. So really good fix, just amusing. Harpoon does not work on bosses anymore. That's good. I actually didn't know it worked, but I guess it's one of those things. If it works, that people would be using it and that makes it, I guess, a little bit too easy to cheese. So good. They fix that. It, should, it probably shouldn't work on, maybe it should fix so that it doesn't work on uh, two star creatures, for instance, or maybe, maybe even one star creatures. Here's one. In-game console disabled by default. Add launcher argument uh, uh, hyphen console to enable. This is good. It's something that if you don't want to get into the console, you shouldn't have to have the console suddenly pop up because you hit the wrong F key. So that's good. I mean, if you want to, then just add the console so you can actually enable it. And here's another one that is kind of, I mean, it's related. It says the console command for enabling developer debug commands has been changed to dev commands from I'm a cheater and a warning message has been added. I think this is the right way of doing it because just because you're using the dev commands doesn't mean you're a cheater. I mean, I use it frequently in making my videos because I could be grinding for certain specific things, but why would I do that when it literally takes 10 seconds to just spawn something in and make the video as opposed to spending two hours to grind something. Same thing when people are building something, when they're doing something really cool, let's say they want to do a creative, really cool build. You don't want to spend hours and hours and hours necessarily just grinding the materials when you should just be using dev commands. So that's a good fix. People playing a sandbox game their way are not cheaters. They're just using the dev commands. 
we have the improved enemy projectile reaction system, which is good. I mean, this has been a little bit weird. You could almost hit them, hit next to them, and they wouldn't react. So it's good that they have to maybe tune that up a little bit. Battle Axe Tweaks hits multiple enemies easier. Good. I mean, the two-handed weapons seem to be a little bit underpowered in damage-wise, and being able to hit multiple enemies is obviously really important for that. We have Player Knockback Force is affected by Equipment Speed Modifiers. Hmm, heavy gear will reduce the knockback from enemies. Actually, well, that makes sense. It means that using, for instance, iron armor that actually has a speed modifier, which means you walk slower when you're wearing a bunch of those armor. It also means that you have less knockback from enemies as well. Well, it's heavier, so there should be less less knockback and basically you're a little bit more meatier so that's good i mean this is something that makes sense it might not make a huge difference when you're playing except maybe you're fighting bosses and stuff like that but it's a good change because it makes it feel a little bit more real black forest stone tower tweaks not sure what they are but obviously it's there are some of these pui's in the black forest ward system fixes you can no longer place a new ward where an enemy ward overlaps okay that's interesting enemy ward i mean it's a well i guess for pvp games but it is a co-op game but it, it, i guess it's good i mean you should it wards are supposed to protect you from enemy enemies coming in and using in your chest and stuff like that so now you actually can protect against that you can't just overlap them comfort calculation is fixed good i am not really sure what they fixed but it's good a comfort is obviously a really important part of gameplay in order to make sure you're rested Fail to connect error message fixed. A lot of people have been, actually been saying that they're having the fail to connect and I'm not really sure what the reason is. It would be nice to have a little bit of an explanation of this occurred when blah, blah, blah was happening. So we have a little bit of an idea of what they fixed rather than just, well, we fixed the error message. Did they fix the problem or did they just fix the error message? Serpent Trophy, stack fix, good. They should be stacking like any other. And here's an interesting one that I, I mean, I don't, don't have that problem in my world. But I can definitely see this being a big issue. It's basically saying missing mood or actually <clears throat> this is actually mood means uh, mother in Swedish. So missing mood or spawn location in some worlds fixed. Note for existing worlds, gen lock uh, generation location command needs to be run manually in the local game with dev commands enabled to generate new locations. This is only needed if your specific world has this issue. This is not very common. So if you do have a world which does not, not have a mute or spawn location, you can actually run the genlock command after using the dev commands. So you're not a cheater, you're just fixing things. And then it will actually generate one of these locations. What happens if you're on a server then? Well, it means that you probably have to download this to your local PC and you have to put it in the world folder, just like you're transferring or backing up any of your worlds, log into it, and then run the command, fix it, and then you re-upload it to your uh, hosting provider or to your wherever your dedicated server is, and I'm assuming that should fix it as well. Making your item collider fixed. Why was there item collider? That's weird. I mean, it's you're wearing it. Why would that be colliding? Oh, that's good, I guess. Added a slight use to lay on hammer hole and cultivator. It could spam them really fast. Maybe it'll be a little bit slower. One of the problems with spamming things is that, especially in multiplayer, it can cause decent issues that think our things are not working properly. And maybe this is one of the fixes. Simply just slow it slow down just slightly so you have less of those things so you don't have a desync between the clients and the server. Hammer remove auto repeat at what? Ah, so you just hold the left button and it will auto remove. Oh, that's nice, especially since they've uh, added a slight delay delay on the hammer as well. So now you just hold left click to oh, so mouse, mouse, middle mouse button actually in order to keep removing things. That's nice. That that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna back up a little bit here about the console console command that you have to or rather console that you have to actually add in the launch argument so what you do is that you go to your your valheim right click and you bring up where you have all these things and it's down here where you actually have to add the hyphen console which will then re-enable this one where you do dev commands warning using a dev command is not recommended it's not your own risk why would that not be recommended i mean it just it is what it is anyway let's do debug mode let's do like that and actually I'm to look at it. Here is my... Oh, isn't it cute? My... Where is my... Oh, there's my pelt mode. My, my one-star wolf cup that uh, took me hours to get. Anyway, let's uh, forget about that. Let's uh, go over here. We are going to do this. We're going to try... Ouch. So we're going to do, do that. We're going to put a B, no placement cost. And then we're going to put down a one of this here. 
and then we're gonna see can I now just okay let's just select this one if I hold it yes I can just hold it I don't have to keep clicking so this makes it actually a little bit simpler actually it uh, of course it's broken now but anyway this is definitely welcome. Um, this makes it a lot easier just to tearing things down. I hate just having to keep clicking when I shouldn't have to. I mean, it should be basically auto repeat. Nice. Now we're coming to some more fixes. This says better network bandwidth handling should work better on low bandwidth connections that use a higher data rate of possible. I haven't really seen this, but I guess the more players you're having, the more this is becomes an issue. I mean, games have to be they have to have a solid network connection handling system in order to make sure they can pass the data fast enough but also accurately enough without having desyncs and stuff like that which is something that can happen when you're being multiple players on the same server we're i've had some issues in the past where one player was desynced and that caused problems for everyone else until that player de disconnected and reconnected dolmen the location fixes stop st top stop top stone from falling for no reason good is some of this pi fixes stuff we have on previously up as well in the black forest Fix removing item from item stand, not always syncing item stats. And again, this is one of those issues that I'm not sure whether it's uh, related to the network ha bandwidth handling or something else, but this is obviously a big problem. If you are putting things up on the item stand, it should be the same item when you remove it. It shouldn't be losing the stats later on. Let's say you upgraded something to five and then you get it back and it's just one. I mean, that would suck. We have server list refresh button can be pressed before the entire list has been downloaded. Good. This is important. You shouldn't have to wait the whole time. Better bad connection de detection. That would actually, it would be nice to be able to see how good the connections are for each player because sometimes we have issues and we can't really tell. There's no real easy way to troubleshoot the problems to see is someone having a problem at the moment? This is the server, is this something else? We have fixed issue causing server to send more data the longer a client was connected. And then we have a localization update. This is something that it will be an ongoing thing. The more things are added, the more things are changed. Everything's gonna have to be localized. So really take advantage of this one. Make sure you update your Steam as well. It should be prompting you. Get your latest Steam and then update to this. Don't forget to update your servers and take a backup before you do that. Just in case, it's always good to have backups. Don't forget about that. Well, what do you think about the rest of the changes in here? Is there anything in here that has been a major problem for you? I know the Night Spawning Wolves has been for some people have been trying to tame and breed, breed wolves. What about everything else? Anything else that has caused you a problem? Have you, for instance, had the issue with the missing Muto spawn location? Have you had that not being in your game world? What problems have you been having that you've seen them fixed here? Let me know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this patch walkthrough, why not make sure you hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to the channel and check out that playlist at the top of my video description for a lot of other Valheim videos. I'll see you next time, Viking. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.